Joshua Phipson. I'm heading the uh, Marine Business Unit uh, from Orca Energy. We are based in Munich in Germany and um, the scope of my presentation is to um, bring heat power uh, more profound on the radar screen of ship owners. I mean it is, it is a technology which do exist today, you can implement it tomorrow and the day after you will start to save on your fuel bill and emissions. We all are aware that we are into a challenging situation regarding emissions, different type of fuels which are coming up. Will there be a CO2 tax or not? Those are all questions which are uh, on top of our agenda. Now, what options do we have? I mean, um, basically, um, we'll see that we have to adapt our technology. We will have different chips towards the future. And um, um, we have to, to work on a, on a couple of, of measures to bring it more uh, into an efficient um, level. So uh, you can, of course, um, you know, uh, concentrate on the hydrodynamics. You can concentrate on the uh, propulsion plant to make it more efficient. Um, we will have perhaps different engines. Are we having fuel cells in the future? Perhaps. The technology is not mature yet on fuel cells for, um, for uh, the shipping industry and the uh, powers which are available are a little bit too low at the moment. But we are heading towards 2050 and new technology will come up anyway. And of course, last but not least, we have to concentrate on the operational use of the vessel. Where quick winds are at stake. I mean, if you sail with the right trim, if you sail at different speeds, um, you can have uh, tremendous savings uh, without any investment up front. So, for ship owners, if you start to implement a new building, you can concentrate on several options which are uh, available for you, which will optimize your specific um, sailing profile or whatever you have to, um, whatever kind of ships are into your fleet. I mean, it will be different for a ferry uh, compared to a container ship. What kind of measures pays out the best for you? Now, let's talk a little bit about the potential of heat power. And our colleagues from Climio, they already addressed it a little bit. Um, heat power is really tremendous. I mean, uh, besides solar, hydro and wind, I would, and I dare to say, that heat power will be maybe the fourth lack of um, uh, energy which, which is present and which we can use. And luckily, more companies are coming up together with climate. I think we are opening the market, also in shipping, um, to, to address this. Because there's so much energy wasted at the moment. It, it's really a pity that we are not having this uh, more um, on our agenda. Um, so we can use uh, geothermal power. We can convert waste heat from heat sources on ships, like being engines or whatever it will be. And uh, we can also uh, convert waste heat in industrial processes like foundries, cement factories, ceramic factories, whatever is there, we can use it. And as you can see, we are active into this area. And as a matter of fact, I'm, honestly, I'm a little bit proud of that. Just recently in January, we commissioned 70 of our installations in Myanmar, in Asia, all connected to 1.5 megawatt gas engines of MTU. And we are delivering 5 megawatt of fuel-free and emission-free power. 5 megawatt. These are the potentials. And also in shipping, if you have a sufficient amount of heat source, um, we can give you maybe 300, 500, or even up to one megawatt of fuel-free power and emission-free power. And currently, it's all dumped into the sea or it just escaped from the funnel, and it's partly not used. And that's, that's really a pity. So this is the combustion engine. And in my view, we will stick to combustion engine for the next decades, at least until I'm retired. Now, I won't stop at 65, but I have planned to stay on board at, until 90, so we still will have uh, um, combustion engines into our ships. I'm convinced on that. But basically, 60% of the, 
of the energy um, inserted into the combustion engine is lost. And we are concentrating on the 60%. So by capturing heat from the exhaust gases and the jacket cooling water, we can add extra power to the vessel and make the vessel more efficient. We use a process for that, now that's called a ORC process, organic Rankine cycle. Um, it's not a new process, but the technology is really mature now and it's economically viable, which was not the case in the past. So this technology, uh, driven by a medium called a refrigerant, as you use it into your, into your refri refrigeration plants on board of your ship, Anyway, by this process, it's a full plug-and-play system. We um, deliver you a kind of a ref uh, refrigeration um, or, or shower cabin size technology which uh, delivers you 100 kilowatt per module. So 100 kilowatt per module we can deliver. We also have um, a 300 kilowatt module available in the industry at the moment. And if there is sufficient demand, we can bring also this 300 kilowatt unit um, to ships. Now, 300 kilowatt in a stack, let's say three installations, will give you approximately one megawatt of heat power onto your ship. Um, we are active not only in shipping, but also in the industry, in mobility. So we do it on trucks. We have many installations um, ready on trucks. Well, we have fuel savings of only 4.5%. We think that's a little bit on the lower side. However, the industry says, hey guys, really done well. I mean, these are really European-based um, truck manufacturers which think that 4.5% is already good. We just take heat from the uh, exhaust of the jet cooling water. Um, we have a lot of products. I'm not going to, uh, to entertain you a little bit on that. A little bit about organ energy. We uh, originate from the Technical University of Munich. Started in 2008. We meanwhile have 60 to 65 people on board. We have done almost 1 million of operation hours. 200 installations up and running very successfully, really. And more than another 100 in the order board which we have to deliver. Our forecast this year is about 250 installations which we Thing that we will bring to the market. So that's really a lot. In shipping, we have sold now 21 installations and that has been achieved in the first 18 months of starting our activity. So 21 installations, it's a good start, but I do invite ship owners who would like to um, know a little bit more about this technology. We have a booth out there and I promise you if you come, we have chocolate bars for you. So everyone who is coming, will get a free of charge chocolate bar. And there's, there's no obligation to buy the unit straight at our booth, you can do it tomorrow as well. Anyway, you see here our um, uh, power plant site in Myanmar, 70 installations will bring you five megawatt. The ORC technology is not new. Um, on, on power plants, shore-based power plants, you have the rank plant cycle. Now, if you replace water by a refrigerant, which is not toxic, and not uh, hazardous, you uh, will end up into an organic rankine cycle. Now this is the uh, product <coughs> which has an automatic plug and play cycle. That means if the heat comes, becomes available on the ship, it will automatically start to run. Again, 100 kW. If you have more heat, we can give you a stack of maybe three modules or four modules, which um, bring them three to 400 kilowatt of power on your ship, and it works as one machine. There's no human interaction required to make it up and running. Now, I have a two-minute video, which, which maybe you can start with to explain a little bit what's inside. Each year, ships produce an enormous amount of waste heat for which there was never a real economic and widely applicable solution. Therefore, this source of energy has remained largely untapped. At the same time, we're looking for ways to waste less energy and make our world more sustainable. Orkin Energy's Efficiency Pack uses waste heat to improve the efficiency of a ship, thereby significantly lowering fuel consumption and thus reducing greenhouse gas and other emissions. Let's have a look at the Efficiency Pack and its inner workings. 
With its compact design, it requires only 1.5 square meters of floor space, making it fit easily in virtually any engine room. The efficiency pack connects directly to the engine's jacket cooling water and indirectly to the exhaust gas funnel or other heat sources through an intermediate hot water loop. In the evaporator, the working fluid is preheated by the jacket cooling water and then vaporized by heated water at 140 degrees Celsius from the intermediate hot water loop. This water leaves the efficiency pack at a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius to again extract heat from the exhaust gases or any other heat source present, like waste steam or thermal oil. The working fluid is routed to the expander as superheated vapor. The working fluid vapor drives the rotary screws in the expander, thereby generating mechanical or electrical energy, which is fed back respectively to the propulsion driveline or to the onboard electricity grid. The condenser liquefies the working fluid vapor, after which it is repressurized by the feed pump. The cycle is now complete and starts anew. By using reliable and off-the-shelf components, Orkin Energy has developed a plug-and-play system that has an anticipated lifetime of 15 service years before the first overhaul. And as the efficiency pack pays for itself within two to four years by saving on fuel costs, it's an excellent investment from an economic point of view. But most importantly, applying this fossil-free form of energy reduces a ship's carbon footprint and environmental impact, making it more sustainable and future-proof. Set sail for the future. Thank you very much. Now, we specifically did not design this technology having the best efficiency. I'm sorry about that. We designed it to have you and bring the best ratio between investment cost and performance to the market. Because it has no use of bringing a, a, a smashing technology to the market and saying, well, the payback time is seven years. You would say, okay, fix it. I'll, I'll steal your uh, chocolate bar, but you're a nice guy and that's it. You, you have to stay between two and four years to bring you an excellent return on investment. This is exactly what we've done. So we use off-the-shelf proven components. We do not use a turbine, for instance. We use a screw expander, which is actually a refrigeration, <coughs> refrigeration compressor, I'm sorry about this word, um, on your ships. I mean, you have them already on your ships, these um, uh, compressors, and we convert it in, into an expander, so you're just running the other way around. Here you can see the unit uh, installed in an engine room, and here they are in our production. We tested the equipment almost one year continuously on the test engines of an engine manufacturer, in this case MTU from Friedrichshafen, so it's well tested before it's, uh, it's brought to the market. Every ship is a target. From small ships to big ships, we can accommodate your needs. There are some exemptions, a rowing boat will be very difficult and also a sailing boat because there's no heat available, but anyway, on most ships it will work. So here you can see one of our first uh, projects we have, new buildings for ferries. Um, they uh, are now in the process of being commissioned, those ferries. And again, we have 21 uh, projects uh, uh, under contract. And um, yeah, they are, they are uh, doing quite well. well. Last couple of slides. Um, well, I took this slide to, to uh, readdress a little bit the uh, challenges we are facing. Here you see a picture of the North Pole. And basically, um, uh, if you look at the um, uh, science, uh, science they, they, they uh, issued a report on uh, what happens to our Arctic areas. Now, um, basically 9% of this surface each decade is disappearing. And I'm, I'm not sure whether you fly uh, uh, often uh, over the North Pole to the US, but you already can see that something is changing on the North Pole. And this is really uh, an issue. And as you can see here, the CO2 level since 1950, here that's uh, 0 0.0, 1950 is going to the rooftop. 
that we all, all are aware of that, that we all know that we have to do something. Now, what is the effect of one efficiency pack? Um, there is a report issued by Science, and you can find it on the internet, saying that one ton of CO2 um, stands for the disappearance of three square meters of ice on the North Pole. That's really quite a lot. Now, if we install one efficiency pack on average, it will save the surface of four soccer fields, football fields, of non-melting ice. Now, you can read what's in the report, but that really every ton of CO2 helps us to make the environment a little bit better. Now, what is the effect? So, Flipser, what are you going to bring to, to the market, my business case? Now, here you can see a fishing trawler vessel. Um, we saved almost 200,000 euros on fuel on this type of vessel, and the accumulated um, um, free cash flow in 15 years is 2.5 million, with a 880 tons of CO2 savings per year. This is guaranteed. So if you want a guarantee from me installing our equipment on your vessel, you can get it, because we are quite confident that this will be the effect. Um, this is another project we have. Uh, it's a hopper dredger, new building. It's even uh, more better in the results. Uh, you can read them down there. But it's three millions of savings, fuel savings, um, in 15 years, and it's 1,000 tons of CO2 um, each year. So that is quite a lot. Um, last slide, we can uh, connect to every heat source you have on board, um, input uh, 80 degrees up to 150 uh, degrees. This is what we need, so we can run on steam, thermal oil, we can run on jacket cooling water, and we can run on um, heat from the exhaust uh, gases. We deliver you 100 kilowatt per module. Now, if you have more heat, we can maybe get you to 500 kilowatt, or the new model which we'll have, which will bring you to one megawatt of power. Um, payback is um, most of the time below four years. It depends a little bit, of course, how much do you sell. If you are more in port than sailing, then it's going to be difficult to uh, get you an attractive uh, business case. But in, in most of the projects we are involved, it's below four years. Um, we can also uh, have a look at uh, what Kleinen already um, advertised is, is, is a, a kind of a rental model or a leasing module. This is something which uh, will be available, of course, into the future. But the question is, in new building projects, do ship owners really require it? So I'm happy to get feedback on that from you, whether you would uh, see such a kind of a financial uh, uh, method, methodology which, which we are about to offer, if that makes sense for you, yes or no. That's about it. Thank you very much. Uh